All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today let's check out what happens when we have latency in our in-ears or headphones when we're singing with our own voice. And um, the relationship between that latency, and I'll do polarity as well, uh, between your internal resonance and what you're hearing um, coming through the in-ears and headphones. Uh, the interaction may not be something you generally think about, but when we speak, the sound comes out of our mouths and travels a short distance, four inches or so, four or five inches to our ears. We hear that sound. We also have the internal resonance of our body that you hear when you plug your ears, which is going to inside of your own head. Um, well, that internal resonance is always there. And uh, then we've taken the sound of our mouths and we've plugged up our ears with headphones or in-ears and we've regenerated that electronically and we've put that back in. Either with analog gear, we're actually introducing it at a sooner time. The sound can actually come out of your mouth, hit a mic, go through all the analog stuff at zero latency and get to your ears before the sound would have actually traveled the physical distance from your mouth to your ear. So you're hearing it a little early. It, but typically with any digital gear, it's going to show up late. So a millisecond's about a foot, and uh, we start to expand that amount of time. If we go into a digital wireless mic, it's got a millisecond or two latency, and then we go into a digital console, and we flip through the analog domain between the mic, uh, digital uh, mic receiver and the console. And then the console adds another one and a half to two and a half milliseconds. And then we come out of that analog into a set of digital in-ears per se and add another millisecond or two. We can get four or five milliseconds or more. And uh, then you start adding a bunch of plugins and uh, we could um, really stretch this out um, to a longer time. So it's taken me quite a while to figure out a way to test this. Um, and it's progressing. I did another video where I taped a seducer mic to my neck and uh, to grab the internal contact sound to a contact mic of my internal resonance. I've done uh, videos where I've taken in-ears and put them into my ears and used those as microphones and run those into a mic input of a console and then turn those up and again listening to the inside of my ear canal or in that time listening to the inside of my ear canal. Um, I've this one seems to work pretty well. So what I'm gonna to do today is I've got this little Sennheiser uh, mic. It's a small little lavalier mic. Um, and I've taken an in-ear, uh, the rubber bit from an in-ear and I've fit it onto there. And I'm gonna push this into my ear, pretty deep into the ear canal there. And uh, this mic will pick up the sound from um, inside my head there. Uh, that'll then run into this uh, Sennheiser 2000 series, EW500 series belt pack that um, will then be received by this other Sennheiser belt pack and go into this mixing board. Uh, yeah, going through the wireless domain there, there isn't latency on that because it's analog or very little latency, but uh, I didn't have a phantom power source for this microphone elsewhere. That was the easiest way to do it. Um, also, what I'm looking for is this dull kind of internal sound. And what's really fun and interesting is when I fire this up and I take the inside of this ear and I run it into headphones and I send the sound from this ear over to this ear, it actually sounds like I'm plugging both my ears. It's actually this weird, surreal, um, sonic experience. This test that I'm doing has actually been quite complex to figure out. I thought I had problems with my setup because I was taking the in-ear sound from uh, my ear canal and then running that into this mixing board through these belt packs and then taking this microphone, this OM7 mic, and running that into this mixing board, taking the two outputs um, into this uh, XTA um, 428 or 448 processor and um, that, what that allowed me to do is um, record a signal that's the same. There's no way to go through a digital processor and go back down to zero milliseconds. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna delay 
this, this is going into input one of the processor, and this mic will go into input two of the processor. And then the outputs of the processor, output one will drive this uh, channel on the mixing board, and output two will drive this channel, and output three will drive this channel over here. So now what I'll be able to do is set both of them to zero milliseconds, and this output of this mixing board goes in this recording device, uh, this Tascam recorder, which will then allow me to record this at whatever latency this digital processor is, and this mic at that same latency. So for the recording purposes, I'll be able to slide both things through zero, um, if that makes sense. So I'm testing this out, and I've got this sound of the in my ear canal, and I'm talking into the mic, and I'm hitting the polarity reverse between the two, and I hear this drastic change to be expected. The mic is different than the in-ear. But then also with just the in-ear, listening to that hitting the polarity reverse is showing this drastic change. So then I'm starting to doubt my gear. I was like, why do I hear this drastic change? And what was happening was by altering the sound I'm hearing from my ear canal out of polarity with my own sound, which I can't get away from, I was unable to hear Unable, the polarity of verse is so noticeable. So I actually had to stop and record everything and listen to the difference. And then I got um, someone else to listen to this and said, does this sound the same? I ran pink noise in and made sure that the polarity of verse wasn't, I thought maybe there was something wrong with the gear, but um, it wasn't. It was um, actually an artifact of what I'm actually trying to test here today. So let's get started. I'm going to um, put this I think that little whack is going to go way in there. I'm going to put this mic way into my ear. And now this cable noise from this mic can be quite um, no annoying for both me and you. So I'm going to clip this mic cable off to my hair here and minimize the amount of um, mic cable noise. Hey, 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 two, 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 two. Okay, so we can hear some sound from inside my head, and you should be able to hear that. Now what I'll do is I'm going to turn that off, and I will turn on the microphone. Hey, one, two, 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 and that should be coming in as well. And for me to hear that, I have to turn the headphones around the other way. Hey, 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 two, 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 and there it is. All right, so here are two inputs. One, two, two. First, you listen to the internal uh, rhythm of my body. Hello, hello. And two, two, two. And then uh, I will now bring the microphone instead. Hello, hello. One, two. Yep, yep, yep. And I'll bring those two together. So, listening to um, in ears. I've brought up the microphone. So this would be you bringing up the microphone into your ears and hearing the internal resonance of your body in addition to that. Those two will sum together. But what happens if the in-ears are, or the headphones are out of polarity? So I will switch those. So I will go to the polarity here and we'll switch. We're in polarity and that's out of polarity. Hello, hello, hello. And you should be able to hear that. I can't hear it because it's in this ear, so I'll find out later on. And out of polarity we've got, and back into polarity. Um, this is going to be interesting because I'm unable to hear a lot of what's going on here. Uh, I know what should happen, and um, later on we'll find out if it does. So the next thing is, with this back in polarity, I'm going to start to show what latency sounds like. So this is at zero milliseconds, and what I'm going to do is, since we cannot delay our internal resonance, that's always going to be zero, I'm going to leave that at zero, and what I will do is I will delay the um, signal being sent from the microphone here. All right, so we're at zero milliseconds. Hello, 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 and there's one millisecond delay. So if you've gone through a unit, and as a single millisecond, that sound would be there, and this will go back to zero milliseconds here, zero milliseconds, one millisecond, 
two milliseconds of delay. Two, 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 two. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, what will I do? I will indicate two, 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 and going down to one, 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 zero, 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 zero. Hey. Okay, and I slid up to two. Let's go to three. Three milliseconds of delay. So I'm going to continue talking to you and show you what four milliseconds sounds like. And we'll continue to five milliseconds and go on up to six milliseconds and work our way to seven milliseconds. I feel like an auctioneer going to eight milliseconds. Do we have a take row in eight milliseconds? Going to nine, nine milliseconds and to 10 milliseconds. And we're going to go all the way back down to one millisecond here and to zero milliseconds. I'm going to do the exact same adventure, except I'm going to polarity reverse at each step. So zero milliseconds and we're going to one millisecond. And with one millisecond, we have in polarity to out of polarity. And we will go up to in polarity, and we're going to go to two milliseconds, two milliseconds in polarity, and two milliseconds out of polarity, out of polarity, in polarity. And let's go to three milliseconds, three milliseconds, and this is uh, in polarity and three milliseconds out of polarity. And just to make things uh, easier, I'm going to slide all the way up to um, while it's out of polarity, hey, 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 three milliseconds, four milliseconds, five milliseconds, six milliseconds, seven milliseconds, eight milliseconds, nine milliseconds, and 10 milliseconds out of polarity. And we will go in polarity and go back down the other way. 10 milliseconds, nine milliseconds, eight milliseconds, seven, and seven milliseconds, six milliseconds, five milliseconds, four milliseconds, three milliseconds, two milliseconds, one millisecond, and zero milliseconds. All right, I'm gonna go from zero milliseconds to 10 milliseconds, and each time you hear a click, that will be an additional millisecond, and I'll do a more consistent tone. So, the cow goes, moo. And that's 10 milliseconds. Um, I will go back down the other way. Cow goes. And I'll do it polarity reverse. So the first thing I'm going to do is swap polarity and then I'll increment up. So let's do the polarity first. Polarity, hey, and now we'll increment up, and hey, um, and that should do it. Um, the whole point of this is to show that latency of the in-ear or monitor sand interacts with our natural resonance, creating differences in tonality that are perceived by a person singing and listening to themselves or someone singing. And this also occurs um, if somebody wearing in-ear stands near a bass rig and the bass has um, the acoustic sound coming out and you feel it in your body or they feel it in their body, and you've got the electronic version of the sound showing up in the ears and the timing between the acoustic arrival and the electronic arrival will have some interaction. How much that is will depend on the differentials between the sound. If it's very, very loud in the ears, your natural resonance is going to be less a factor. If um, the in-ears are very quiet and you're um, if the in-ears are very quiet and you're singing very loud, or you're, they're very close to the same volume, this interaction is going to be more pronounced. Um, you know, digital, how much digital latency you're, in, you're inducing onto the signal. Um, all of these are factors, and the polarity is a factor uh, for monitor engineers or listening in headphones and studio monitoring. 
uh, through headphones. Uh, having this knowledge and um, knowing that interaction is there and being able to address it may be the tool in your toolbox which uh, solves a problem or gets you a gig. Uh, or it's just interesting stuff. Cool, cool. Hope you enjoyed it and I will do more soon. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed the video and also, hey, check out soundtools.com. Bunch of products I personally design and um, manufacture problem solving stuff for um, pro audio. And um, yeah, it's, it's fun and it's um, something else I enjoy doing in addition to sharing the knowledge that I wish people had shared with me when I was starting in this industry. Um, and also Rat Sales, ratsound.com is uh, we have a sales department we sell all kinds of pro audio gear give us a shout um, and uh, we'll give advice we've got an install department as well as a rental department which is um, you know the, how I started in this business when I was 17 and um, you know that's built up to we do big festivals like Coachella Festival and Pearl Jam and Jack Johnson Blink-182 and other major artists um, as well as smaller stuff. So, yeah, if you need something in pro audio or video lighting or whatever, give us a shout and um, we'll help you out.